music is like root work. Magic is pulled up from the soil. It echoes on the stony hills and spins in the tall grass by the sea. It soothes the savage beast and pierces the soul of a man. Music is that old witchcraft. It writes your true name on a scrap of paper and makes you dance undignified like King David. This is the Hoodoo Music Podcast. You're listening to the very first episode of the Hoodoo Music Podcast. This show will be focusing on independent musicians, specifically those in the upstate of South Carolina and surrounding areas. The way the show is going to work, real simple. Just going to bring on a songwriter or a band, have them play a few songs, and just kind of talk to them a little bit. So the very first guest is an old friend of mine and a very good songwriter, excellent guitarist, uh, Jacob Johnson. Uh, Hey there, Mark. Thanks for uh, having me on the show. Very exciting to be here. (laughs) I'm <laughs> glad to have you, man. It's it's actually really cool to be able to call on an old friend for the first uh, first episode of something like this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I, why don't we just go ahead and jump right into some music. We've actually already recorded a little live session, and uh, we're just going to throw the tracks in. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this first song? Because it's, it's a new song, and yeah. I, had, uh, you, I had heard you play it recently, but um, tell us a little bit about it. Well, let's see. I was driving... Um I, I was driving somewhere. That's how I spend a lot of my time is driving. And, uh, you know, sometimes I just cut the music off and think and maybe write a little bit in my head. And uh, I, I was sort of messing around with this idea of um, uh, feeling at home on the road because you, I sort of, if I'm at home, if, if I'm in my actual home for too long, I start to feel like I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I get a little antsy. And it's almost like being, being homesick for being gone. So that was kind of uh, that was kind of what I was thinking about, and the chorus came to me, and uh, uh, kind of tossed it around with um, uh, with a friend of mine, Gray Lee, who I'm sure we'll talk about uh, later on, and uh, took a little while, but I'm pretty uh, happy with how it came out. Cool. So what uh, what's the name of the song? The working title of the song is uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald. Cool. Well, here's F. Scott Fitzgerald from uh, or by Jacob Johnson and Gray Lee. <laughs> You're staring in the rear view, but you're not looking back You're just putting your makeup on The loose change in the ashtray, we're saving for the tollway Rattles like a tambourine to the rhythm of every song And the road says, welcome home You got an old soul, but you're not alone We're gonna sing all those songs about highways and freedom and make up a few of our own And make up a few of our own Moving like the ever-changing scenery around us But it's constant as a coffee stain on an old gas station map If you're looking for your roots, kick the dust off of your boots and Throw your suitcase in the back And the road says, welcome home You got an old soul and you're not alone We're gonna sing all those songs about highways and freedom And make up a few of our own 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 You 
get your notebook and me with my tobacco. You're writing poetry and I'm just blowing smoke. Tell me again about F. Scott Fitzgerald and I'll tell another corny joke. And the road says, Welcome home. You got an old soul, it's you're not alone. We're gonna sing all those songs about highways and freedom and make up a few of our own. 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 I've known you for about 10 years, Jake. Something like that. Don't date me. <laughs> I wouldn't dream of it. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm, you know. That's enough. not my type. That's enough. That wasn't what I meant, and you know it. <laughs> So I, I've known you for a long time, and I've heard a lot of songs that you've written, mm-hmm. and I've, I've heard some songs that you don't even play anymore. That's true. You've recorded a lot of them. I've actually recorded yeah. uh, some of your songs in yeah. a couple of your albums. Re- it, well, really, the two albums that I have out that are still, uh, still commercially available, uh, you recorded. That's right. That's right. So. Uh, why don't you go ahead and promote those? Uh, well, there's one called uh, One Take Jake that uh, is just all acoustic and vocal. Um, very simple, very stripped down, lots of uh, some original songs, some uh, older songs of mine, some new ones, and some covers. And uh, that's available on iTunes and Amazon and all that kind of thing. And uh, as well as my website, which is www.jacobjohnsontunes.com. And also uh, a Christmas album called Wild and Sweet that uh, I'm very proud of. Yeah, also I'm, I'm proud of that one too. Yeah, you should be. That's a, that's a good album. It Thank came you. Came out well. Thank you. Thanks um, for doing it. But like I was saying, I've heard a lot of songs that you've written. I think that is one of my favorite songs. Thanks, man. That, that you've written by far. I appreciate it because every time you know, I'm not a really prolific writer, and I feel like every time I write a song and it comes out well, I get it polished and I'm done, and then I just feel like. I am never going to be able to write another song. How did I do that? Where did it come from? I'm not going to be able to. That was it. That was the last one. And I've been thinking that for like 10 years worth of songs, you know. So it's nice to nice to be able to crank out another one that I feel like's a keeper. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, sometimes it's, I guess it's hard to, you know, you have all sorts of experiences that you could pull things from, but sometimes you don't know how to put it into words. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of times you have to sit on it a little bit so that it's not uh, so it's not totally fresh, um, you know, in your mind when you're trying to write and be thoughtful and uh, uh, and nuanced and interesting, you know, when you're in the midst of pain or anguish or some other uh, heightened emotion, maybe isn't sure. the best time to uh, be able to express it in a in an articulate and uh, clear way, um, at least for me anyway, the way I like to write. Sure. Well, um, what what is the most painful song you've ever written? Um, let's see. I don't know because I I don't feel like I have a, a lot of like hurtful sad. I mean, even even the even the very sad songs in a way are cathartic, you know. So sure. they don't necessarily they don't necessarily hurt. Um, you know, two thousand three uh, uh, is a very. Uh, um, it feels very personal, and it's very kind of bittersweet. It's not like sad, but it, it like it's very uh, it's very real to me still. Definitely, um, yeah, uh, yeah. That's probably that's probably the best example. Another one uh, uh, that we'll play later on the podcast is uh, "So Far Away." That one's a little more uh, recent. Doesn't have quite as much history behind it, but you know that was that was one that just kind of happened. That I wasn't trying to write a song, but there it was. So gonna have to finish it. Um, sure. None of them are none of them are necessarily like difficult to relive and and play in front of people. Um, but you know they all they all come from somewhere. Sure. Well, uh, two thousand three. Why don't we go ahead and um, why don't we go ahead and play that one? Okay. Sure. All right. So here's two thousand three. Which album? This first came out on. Uh, your this this came album, out right? on my first full length album, which was called Established 1986. That uh, because that's the year I was born. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> I'm da- but I'm dating myself. Um, making it weird again. Making it weird again. That's what I do. Uh, and uh, let's see, that came out in 2007, and uh, eventually I just kind of had too much 
material out that I, I wasn't really able to keep everything in print anymore. So I re-recorded sure. some of the old songs on that for uh, for this newer album that we did uh, a year or two ago. Um, so now it's it is available on One Take Jake. Cool. Well, uh, here's 2003. Sunday's best and my Days worst. We were in between and seventeen on December thirty first. Hoopla and fireworks and signs hung on wire hooks. Happy New Year. Pleasant smelling strangers who we never really met High off their ambitions And marijuana cigarettes Empty resolutions But content in their confusion Happy New Year I spend a lot of time thinking about you and me And the night we partied like it was 2003 We had punch in our teacups and on the front of your new white gown Party hats with no elastic and a radio we found Full of songs we hated But still we waited Happy New Year I spend a lot of time Thinking about you and me the night we partied like it was 2003 up to the radio and held the antenna steady while we waited on a countdown that never came cause it was midnight already so we just let the music play and we just let the music say happy new year time thinking about you and me and the night we party 
seemed like it was 2003. Then that song's a little bit more of a uh, story. Yeah. So more of a personal story. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's fa- it's fairly self-explanatory, but basically sure. uh, uh, a girl I was dating at the time uh, who's th- living down in Florida, I went down to visit, uh, you know, kind of spend New Year's Eve with her and some other friends. And um, we were all like 17, 18 years old, you know, at this point. Um, I don't want to date myself, but I was right around in, in that age somewhere. And, uh, yeah, there was, being that young, there was really nothing in, uh, Jacksonville where we were that we could do or get into for New Year's Eve. So, um, the plan was to just take a radio out onto the beach and, you know, listen to the music until midnight. And then at midnight we would all count down with the guy on the radio and we would all say happy. And it would just be this great, nice moment with just us and the ocean and the stars and really sweet and romantic but um we we didn't realize until uh, about 1205 <laughs> that they were just going to play music the whole time um you know somebody looked at their watch and was like uh guys we missed it <laughs> and you know because the radio station was just playing new there wasn't a dj or anything they weren't going to tell us and so uh so the year was off to a wonderful start at that point <laughs> I, I love that line, the the radio we found full of songs we hated. Well, you know, we were all yeah. like, we were all cool kids that didn't listen sure. to Top 40 stuff. Sure. You know, but no, that's a fun one. And uh, uh, you, so, sort of the idea of the song is that even when things don't go exactly the way you wanted them to, a lot of times you end up looking back and, and appreciating it for what it was, you know, because we spend so much of our lives looking forward to like, you know, the weekend or, you know, New Year's Eve or the whatever the next thing is. Yeah. And we kind of waste all the time in between or, or at least we don't appreciate it, you know. Well, I, I mean, I'd love to talk to you a little bit about songwriting because you, you mentioned that it, it, you're, you I mean, you're not very prolific. You tend to only write a handful of songs every year. Yeah. I mean, I really, you know, and this is probably just me making excuses for myself, but I have to get into like a certain headspace to write. Sure. And if I'm uh, if I'm kind of in my routine where I'm on the road for a couple of days and then I'm back here and booking hotels for the next weekend, getting everything ready for the next weekend, doing laundry, cleaning up around the house, and then going out again and then coming back, I kind of get on this cycle where I can't get in a good headspace for writing. So I, I kind of have to you know, target times of the year that are slower, like for me in terms of traveling, like the beginning of the year or usually right at the end of summer is a little bit slower when everybody's going back to school. And I, and I'm intentional about trying to make time for writing then. So I might jot down ideas or come up with hooks or anything. Um, but I, I, I kind of, uh, try to wait until I have the opportunity to shift my schedule around to flesh it out, you know? Sure. Well, I mean, life gets in the way, and it, it is sometimes hard to get into that state where you're where you're feeling creative. You know, yeah. what, what's that state like for you? What's it like uh, when your brain is coming up? I guess when you're coming up with good ideas, um, and what, you know, like it's almost, and it's probably like this for for most writer. It's almost like it's almost manic. You know what I mean? Sure. And um, it's uh, you you sort of have to be willing to obsess over an idea and live in an idea for a little while in a way that doesn't, if you disconnect from it in a way that doesn't feel totally healthy looking at it and being like, Oh, that was kind of emotionally draining. And I don't like to fixate on stuff like that, or that was sad. And I don't want to dwell on that too long, but you kind of have to a little bit to, to get anything done artistically, you know? Absolutely. Well, uh, you've got some more songs for us. What's uh, 
what's what's this next one? Um, this is a, a song that I wrote. Uh, that uh, another one that I haven't recorded, and so the working title is so far away. But I'm not in love with that, so I might change it. Or you might be listening to this podcast five years later, and you're like, nope, that was what he wound up going with. Yeah. Um, I wrote this after a uh, girl who I was uh, in love with um, came from out of town to visit. Different girl who lived out of town uh, came to visit and then left. So, you know, I was just really bummed out that she was here and then she was gone. So this song came out of that. (laughs) Okay. So this is so far away. The sun is descending. The moon's on its way. Whippoorwill sings out a sad old cliche. Now don't try and tell me it's better this way why are you so far away there's a lyric it leaves on the tip of my tongue it's broad and it's narrow it's old and it's young it's all that i feel but i just couldn't say why are you so far away Why are you so far away? Why are you so far away? It's all that I feel, but I just couldn't say. Why are you so far away? The stars are beginning to twinkle and shine until they've each found their place. I'm still looking for mine, but they'll all disappear when the night turns to day. Why are you so far away? Why are you so far away? Why are you so far away? The stars disappear. And the night turns to day Why are you so far away? should forget you and try to move on but you're stuck in my head like that whippoorwill song and I know if I did I'd regret it someday why are you so far away So these songs not only showcase your ability to write a song and tell a story, they're also uh, showcasing your ability as a musician. You're quite a proficient guitar player. Thank you. Um, how, 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 many, uh, how many hours a day do you spend practicing these days? Um, well, I'm, I'm playing pretty good right now. Uh, on, on a good day, two or three hours a day. But there's still some days that I'm not really able to pick it up other than maybe like a few minutes here or there. Or, sure. Yeah, and sometimes if I'm on the road, I'm not hardly playing aside from like when I get to the gig and warm up, warm up for maybe 20 or 30 minutes and then play the concert, which isn't really the same as practicing. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, inspired musically right now, and so I've been playing guitar a lot. I've probably been playing guitar more than I've been writing over the last, uh, you know, uh, month or so. Well, I've definitely been playing more than I've been writing, but improving and working on working out musical ideas instead of lyrical ideas. Do you notice a difference in your performance? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, um, 
Yeah, I I can tell when I'm playing really well and when I'm really able to do what I what I hear in my head musically, and when maybe it doesn't come as easily, or I just kind of fall back on you know my chops. You yeah, know what I mean. Well, because you know when you're when you're playing live, your songs change a lot. Your the what you're actually playing, I've noticed changes yeah. periodically. Yeah. So is a lot of that just improvisation while you're on you know while you're um, on stage. You and- know there there are places where I where I improvise and I enjoy improvising. Um, a lot of it is uh, uh, a lot of it's very structured, but it's still uh, you know I I I I work it out and I'm, I allow myself to let it evolve. Sure. You know. Um, I really, a, a lot of musicians really focus on improvising, you know, um, and I'm not one of those guys. I, I sort of, in a way, I play the guitar almost like I write. Um, I really want to figure out exactly what I'm going to play and how I'm going to play it in the way that's most effective. And that's how I sing, too. Like I, um, yeah, almost like a stand-up will tell the same joke a hundred times, and by yeah. the hundredth time, they tell it a little bit differently than the first time because they're working out all these subtle details about timing and phrasing and what word's going to work, you know, the the best in a certain spot. So that's kind of how I work my solos out too. Um, for the most part, I do a lot of improvising as well, but um, maybe not, uh, maybe not as, as much as a lot of musicians do. Well, I mean, but, but you, so you, you don't focus as much on, uh, the improvisation you focus more on just you know nailing what you're hearing in your head yeah because i feel like um uh, i think some musicians uh feel like they're in the moment when they're improvising but i don't feel that i feel in the moment when when you're I, feeling it when i don't have to think about what i'm going to play or what i'm going to sing and i can just perform and be there for the audience you know what i mean sure um, it, it's kind of like a an extension of yourself, just like your arm is, yeah. or, you know, yeah. it's, it's like being able to, you know, clap your hands. Yeah. Yeah. You're actually, so, so you, you know, how long have you been playing? Uh, I started playing about, about the time I was 11 years old. I started messing around a little bit and, uh, you know, learned the first three or four chords that I ever learned and then was playing in bands pretty soon after that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, cause your, your style is, very different, you know. You 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 incorporate a lot of um, finger tapping and finger picking and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, what kind of, I guess, inspired you to to evolve that style? Um, well, I was doing kind of the electric blues thing for a long time when I was in high school for five or six years, uh, high school and into college a little bit. Um, you know, and I played in a band, and we would do the wing joints and that whole circuit, and and it was fun to do Stevie Ray Vaughan and Hendrix and uh, Jackson Five and that kind of stuff, Prince, some of that that kind of thing, and uh, did the electric blues thing and felt really good about it, and it was fun. And then uh, I started getting hold of some guys like Phil Keggy and Michael Hedges and uh, bassist Victor Wooten, and there were there were just a lot of interesting things they were doing that I wanted to start trying out. And um, sure. coming coming from sort of a sort of a songwriting background in terms of the the band I was playing with, um, kind of incorporated it more as a songwriter than as just an instrumentalist. You know, so a lot of the guys who are playing today who use those same kind of techniques, they're more instrumentalists, and, and there's a lot of great ones. But I still try to use all that in the context of writing songs that regular people listen to and not just guitar nerds sure no offense to the guitar nerds out there that's and that's and that's one of the things i actually really like about your music particularly is that is that it doesn't just appeal you know it appeals to the musician in me but it appeals also to the music lover in yeah well i mean music uh music by itself can be very moving and and powerful and it doesn't need uh lyrics to do that um, those techniques and things are all just uh, tools, you know, to get to get to an end, you know, to create something that people will enjoy or find moving, you know. Well, what was the first thing that drew you to music? What, what, I guess, what? Um... I don't know, man, because I was like, I was young, and I and I don't remember. I mean, when I started playing about the time I was 11 or so, I had been enamored by the guitar my whole life. Like, if there was a guitar on TV, like, I just stopped and watched the guitar. If there was somebody, you know, in church or at at our house, my grandmother played a little bit. If she had the guitar out, I was just, like, 
watching. I was watching the hands. I was watching the the left hand fingers because I knew. I mean, I was probably three years old, but I knew like, okay, that is the hand that's doing the stuff right there. Um, so I was, I was, I don't know, man. I was just drawn to it in a weird way when I was very young. So, uh, so it's always been around, though. Yeah, yeah. Okay. In, in, in a sense, when I started actually picking up the guitar and playing, it didn't feel like a new thing I was trying. It felt like the culmination of an entire childhood just being mesmerized by, uh, you know, by certain types of music and by the instrument, you know. That was the money shot right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, and I've never articulated it that way before, but it's, tr- I mean, I remember thinking very, sp- feeling very specifically like, yeah, this is what I-, I should learn to play because I've always loved it. I remember being very aware that it didn't feel like a new thing. It felt like, you know, like I said, it felt like the next thing, like, all right, I should pick one up and learn to play it. Well, what's the next step after this then? Um, just to keep getting better and keep, uh, uh, sharing my music with people and entertaining people and uh, trying to learn as much as I can about uh, my instrument, you know? Yeah. Well, I I feel like your instrument might be, it's more than just the guitar. Your instrument is your personality. Yeah. Yeah. I I agree with that. And there are ways. You're very much like the consummate entertainer. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, And those are the guys that I look up to as much if not more than my guitar heroes or the great performers or uh, specifically people who um, uh, may have had a unique way to tell a story using their gift, you know, uh, Gene Kelly with dance, um, you know, Woody Allen, Alfred Hitchcock, Lin-Manuel Miranda with hip hop and rap and writing musicals, um, just people who can convey a story in a unique interesting way using their specific medium of art. Um, those are the guys I really, I really admire. And, and there are ways that I don't feel like, um, I feel really good about where I am creatively and musically, but I still feel like there are, are ways that I'm, that I have yet to learn in terms of how to express myself on stage and how to be vulnerable on stage and in my writing and in my music, um, that I'm not, uh, that I'm not there yet. No, it's just, it's a process of constant growth. Yeah, yeah. And it's good to, um, man, somebody asked me a couple of weeks ago if I ever just felt like I had learned everything that I wanted to learn on the guitar. And I was like, man, if, no. <laughs> if, if, I, if, I ever, if I ever stop playing, it won't be because I felt like I had done everything. It'll be because I get frustrated and give up. I get a lot closer to getting frustrated and giving up than to like hanging it up. It was like, well, I just feel like I've done it all. Um, a lot closer to that end of the spectrum. Well, what frustrates you? What I guess what is the roadblock that makes you want to give up sometimes? Um, you know, just bad days like everybody has. Picking up an instrument and not being able to do what I what I want to do exactly the way I'm hearing it, and uh, knowing that uh, I, I think it was Chet Atkins originally who said that you know the the guitar didn't change. Like it, it stays the same. So if I'm having a hard time, it's not the guitar's fault. It's my <laughs> fault, you know. And uh, uh, you know, there's st- and just just listening to so many great players who play in so many different styles and being overwhelmed by all that there is to do and learn. Not necessarily with uh, my inability to to do it or take it in, but just limitations as a human to like, oh, well, I want to try that. Oh, but I also want to get good at that. And I also want to figure out how to use this technique or this idea. Um, and it's just, there's a, there's a lot of great music out there and a lot of great players. For sure. Well, I think you've got one more song for us. Yeah. Um, Gray Lee, who is a uh, mutual friend of ours. Yeah. And uh, just... Uh, Probably have him on the show at some point. Yeah. Yeah, you should. Very interesting guy. Very uh, uh, weird and creepy and odd. And, and an excellent songwriter. Yeah, and, and he and he will take musician. that as a, as a huge compliment, and he sure. should, and I mean it that way. So uh, we've known each other for since I since he was taller than me. We've known each other a long wow. time. Yeah. yeah, and you're um, a tall guy. I'm a tall he's, guy, and he's not. <laughs> he's uh, regular size. We'll say regular size. Um, and yeah, we'd never really done much co-writing, but we've kind of been on a, a little co-writing kick. 
and he came over one day uh, a little while ago now, probably close to a year, um, and we had an idea we were working on, and it wasn't really going anywhere, and we were about to just hang it up, and uh, he said, well, I've got this kind of concept I've been working on, and he had sort of the the idea, kind of the structure of this song and the concept of it. And, uh, man, we sat and probably wrote about 30 verses to it and picked out the best <laughs> ones and put them in order. And, um, yeah, to, this song to me is a perfect co-write. I, I listen to it and I hear myself and I hear Gray um, also. So it really feels like we were both well represented in the, in the final product. So this is a song called uh, The Good Night Chorus. Cool. Well, uh, we'll hear the good night chorus in just a moment, and we'll actually close the show out that way. Cool. Uh, Jacob, thanks so much for for agreeing to do this. Hey, uh, thanks really for having me. Appreciate it, and um, yeah, I look forward to uh, hearing more from you, and and maybe uh, down the road we'll have you on again. Sure, I'd love to. All right, so here's the good night chorus. Thank you so much for listening to the Hoodoo Music Podcast. Please subscribe on iTunes, uh, maybe give it a rate and a review, and, and keep your eyes out for the next episode. Um, I'm going to try to get this going, you know, make good, I, I think there's a potential for a good show uh, here because Greenville, and, and Jacob, I, I, don't, I don't know how you feel about this, but I feel like Greenville is a, is almost like a bottomless well of talent Sure. without any without any buckets to pull that talent out. You know? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it feels that way, but yeah, there's there's talented people all over Greenville and in every uh, in every facet and aspect. Well, again, thank you so much for coming on the show, and uh, we're going to lead out with the good night chorus. <laughs> Good night to the waitress and the regular crowd. Good night to the band that's playing too loud. Good night, good night, good night to you all. Good night. Good night to the ladies. Good night to the gents. Good night, you go getters who got up and went. Good night, good night, good night to you all. Good night. Good night to the gypsies, the weary, the worry. Good night to the tipsy, the drowsy, the blurry. Good night, good night, good night to you all. Good night. Good night to the cowboys and the rodeo clowns, the salt of the earth and the dust of the ground. Good night, good night, good night to you all. Good night. Good night, you street preacher, reading from King James Dean. Good night, all you pushers and alleyway queens. Good night, good night, good night to you all. Good night. Good night to the voice of a lost generation, singing for tips in a dark railway station. Good night, good night, good night to you all. Good night. Too big for this town Come back when you're ready To lay some roots down Good night to the hustlers To the wise guys and thieves Good night all you skeptics And those who believe Good night to the late crowd Good night early risers Good night all you poets Good night plagiarizers Good night to the faithful Good night to the few Good night all you lovers and the ones you love too. Good night, good night, good night to you all. Good night. Good night, good night, 
Good night to you all. Good night.